we start off these two sets of videos um, looking at the carbon cycle and initially we're going to look at a carbon cycle in terms of um, the, the sources of carbon and where carbon is found throughout the atmosphere or throughout the entire uh, all of the spheres of the earth um, and then in the next video we'll look at all of the processes that actually allow for carbon to cycle through, um, through, through all the different portions through what we call the carbon cycle. Now the reason why we we talk about carbon in so much more detail, and and it has to, and if you if you look at it in terms of the IB syllabus, um, carbon is covered in uh, in topic four in ecology. Um, the other two cycles that we that we do focus on, if your school uh, goes into the option uh, option C for ecology, um, is the nitrogen and phosphorus cycles. But the reason for carbon, carbon is, as we saw in the last video, it accounts for 60 to 70 percent of, um, it, or makes up 60 to 70 percent of, um, of all living organisms. Uh, it is the most abundant uh, element for life. So for any in life, um, and it's also con it's one of one of only a few um, elements that is able to continuously cycle throughout the biotic and abiotic ecosystems, and so it's important to to be able to go through and understand where carbon is sourced from, how carbon cycles, um, and how that affects um, the earth and also uh, organisms within the ecosystem. And so carbon is, uh, it's, it's, it's the cycle in which carb, uh, that we study uh, in terms of how carbon is exchanged among the entire biosphere um, or uh, amongst all of the spheres of the earth, which include the biosphere, the pedosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and, and the atmosphere of the earth in general. Um, and for most biological compounds and biological organisms, it is the main element. Um, that is found, but it also makes up a large component of many minerals that are found, um, including something called limestone. And so with this video, we, we look at the pools. So the, the carbon pools, um, or the carbon, you can, you, I think sources is not the right word, but pools of carbon where carbon is um, either stored, or if it's stored there, if it's when it's eventually released. And so a carbon pool is any location uh, or system that can store or release carbon. And this is all found in um, on on this on this page right here. It's all found in these different areas um, of the earth. And so it, to initially start off with in terms of uh, talking about um, the atmosphere, um, and you'll notice the arrows that are being that are that are sort of um, bringing together all of these different parts of the Earth. Um, but just in general, just talking about what these uh, what these areas of the Earth are, are or where they are actually. And so initially, carbon in the atmosphere, in the upper atmosphere of the Earth, um, is found primarily as uh, carbon dioxide. So carbon uh, is found as carbon dioxide and there's a smaller amount uh, with a smaller amount as methane smaller amount as CH4 or methane now in terms of in terms of the amount of carbon um, it is actually there's less carbon here so there's less carbon available in the atmosphere uh, available uh, than in the Earth's crust or in the oceans. Um, but it, it has a huge impact in terms of um, in terms of its importance. Um, as an effect on uh, on climate, and so it has a major impact uh, is on climate, and especially when we look at climate, um, something called greenhouse gases, and so the biggest impact more than um, more than the fact that it's it's not as it's not a large uh, source of carbon than uh, some other um, places on Earth. 
um, but it has a huge, huge impact that inf it, that impacts essentially all um, living organisms. And so the atmospheric carbon is quite important. And you notice how on this page right here, you see all the processes and how they're connected to one another. And so you'll notice that the atmosphere is actually, as it's on top, uh, it's also um, the one that actually uh, go so you have a connection between the pedosphere and the atmosphere, the biosphere and the atmosphere, the hydrosphere and the atmosphere, as well as the formation of fossil fuels um, as a result of carbon. And so, and then indirectly um, through these three in the middle, um, it can also affect the geosphere. Now, in terms of just um, just defining what these places are, so pedosphere, um, pedo coming from uh, meaning foot. And so this is referring to Earth's soil. And so soil in itself um, is a organic mixture uh, of matter, minerals, uh, trapped gases, and trapped liquid, um, and also um, organisms that support life. And so all of these things together, um, and organisms, all of these things together are uh, are ensuring that any life that is found in, in the soil is able to be is able to be supported, uh, because you still have um, the necessary gases coming in, you have the liquids coming in, you have organic materials and minerals that are required for organisms, so that organisms can live. And most often, the, the organisms that are living are um, the plants that have rooted themselves into the soil. The biosphere is connected to both the atmosphere as it's releasing carbon from the biosphere, from the living material uh, to the atmosphere. It's also releasing, uh, it's also connected to the pedosphere right here. Uh, but there's also a, a circular um, pattern with the biosphere where the biosphere is actually um, recycling carbon um, or it's cycling the carbon throughout the living materials. And so the biosphere in general is just, it's the part of the earth with living material. So it's the earth with living material. Um, and these organisms will store carbon uh, within biological molecules. And so this living material can include things like plants, uh, animals, uh, soil, and microbes. And so all of these, so it, the, the most basic um, thing that you can look at in terms of the cycling within the biosphere is the cycling of oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, between plants and animals. And so that's something that remains within the biosphere. It doesn't go anywhere else. Um, but that's not to say that um, trees and plants are able to release carbon dioxide or release oxygen into the environment. Um, and eventually carbon dioxide that's, that's released from animals is able to escape rather than being taken in within the, within the biosphere, it escapes into the atmosphere. Or it finds its well into the soil and it becomes a storage space inside the soil. The second, the next bit is the hydrosphere. Um, like we talked about in uh, up, uh, up top here, um, the hydrosphere is, uh, this is where you have all of the dissolved uh, inorganic carbon. Uh, that's found in all of the Earth's water, most often uh, in the large oceans. Um, and there's a large quantity of the carbon that's found or that is on Earth is found mostly in the oceans. And so you'll notice the arrows, they're connected all, of course, back to the atmosphere. But in this case, this is the one example where the atmosphere is actually, it can, it can, give car, it can release carbon dioxide into, uh, into the water.
But then you also have, um, if you're close enough or uh, with organisms that are inside uh, in, in these water uh, environments, they are releasing carbon um, as well. So it, it goes into the biosphere. But there's no other connection to that. And it sort of makes it look location-wise, logistically, it sort of makes sense that you wouldn't have um, a connection between the pedosphere and the hydrosphere because there's really no way of, of carbon actually transporting itself or, or recycling itself into the soil. The geosphere um, is, is, is what we know as the largest amount of carbon. So the largest amount of carbon uh, is found in the geosphere. And this is stored in what we know as the sedimentary rocks. Stored in sedimentary rocks. And what happens, and, and, and this is what we, what we talk about when we look at the, the Earth's um, crust and the, the Earth's core, um, it, it, it gets packed in and packed in and packed in, and you have all of this carbon that gets trapped within the planet's crust. And so it's stored in sedimentary rocks uh, within the crust, and the crust uh, of the Earth is called the lithosphere. Um, these rocks are produced um, as mud hardens, uh, but as the mud is hardening, it's also holding uh, carbon materials within them as well. So it's packing in carbon, often in the form of uh, calcium carbonate. And so you have a combination of both calcium and carbon materials being packed in and packed in and packed in. Um, and, then, and then over time, they just become further and further, uh, deeper and deeper into it as part of the Earth's uh, crust. And so you have, it's a, it's a large amount of carbon that's actually stored, it gets trapped, and it's, it's often, uh, it doesn't get released unless there's uh, some sort of an event that can cause, um, at the surface level, can cause um, the rocks or, or, the, or things like landslides or mudslides to occur with erosion. Um, you won't have, without erosion, you won't really have um, as much um, carbon being released. And then finally, the last um, possible way that uh, uh, carbon can be stored um, is in the form of a fossil fuel. And, and what we say in terms of, uh, this is not fossils in, the, in, they sort of, they can be seen as that way, but they're not, the, the only uh, aspect to the name of it is that these are stored over millions of years. Um, but this is actually just a fossil of organic material. And so the forms, and I think we all know this at this point, but for the forms of uh, organic material fossils include coal, uh, oil, and natural gas. And these are all often all materials that are trapped uh, in, in the earth, but they're also, they're formed, and it takes millions of years to actually form. Um, normally, um, fossil fuels do not flux uh, into the atmosphere. So they do not uh, they do not flux into the carbon cycle, meaning uh, that carbon or uh, fossil fuels cannot naturally uh, release their carbon uh, back into the atmosphere to get recycled. It usually it, fossil fuels are just as a storage. However, um, except for human activity. And so human activity, the the actual the physical um, way that um, people are actually able to um, uh, release this carbon by mining for coal and mining for oil. Um, this it causes this mining of these resources causes a release of this carbon uh, into uh, into the atmosphere into the carbon cycle. And this is extra carbon that's actually being released into the atmosphere into the carbon cycle, uh, which is not necessarily it's not something that the Earth is able to manage. And this is where we get influences on climate. Um, and, and, and why there's such a movement of uh, banning fossil fuels away of, 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 in terms of energy um, sources. And so naturally, and it's important that you understand this, naturally they do not flux, or I'm going to write this here, cycle into the carbon cycle, but if unless there's some sort of physical human activity that causes it to occur.
And so at, at the end of this video, I think, uh, I think it's important for you to understand um, all of these different um, areas where carbon can store and be released. Um, and it's gonna it's more important in terms of when we talk about in the next in the next video how carbon pools um, uh, are have all which processes are then using the carbon from these pools and then cycling it throughout um, the, the individual uh, processes and so in the next video now that we've we've put together the different locations where carbon can be found now we're going to look at the processes um, that actually use up this carbon either taking it in or after taking it in, they, they will use it and then they will release it back into the uh, environment. And so in the next video, we'll look at the carbon fluxes um, as, part, as they make up the carbon cycle.